Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. Let's jump right into RuPaul's Drag Race. This is episode two. I said, Shantae, everybody is still staying. So let's jump right into it. Um, I came today. I want. I know I'm a, I'm a lot extra today. A lot extra. I wanted to show off my favorite daytime look as well. This is a nice, cute little short ruffle sleeve jumpsuit and what i you can't see it on camera but it's a little cut out right here in the center some it, it just makes me feel like a day at the beach strolling down a boardwalk somewhere and i threw on a cute little wig i just wanted to be extra today <sighs> don't mind me but anyway this is going to be a long one there's a lot of looks off top rupaul group one didn't um didn't give me what I needed. Like, I'm hoping next week the girls will give me a little something extra. Denali, I'm looking forward to you, girl. Tamisha. It was all right. It was all right, but let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, first, we open up the episode with the dramatic pork chop. Everybody's up there. They got their lipsticks. I believe Denali was the only person who would have voted for the person I would have voted for, which was... What's his name? Joey J. I would have voted for Joey J and them chicken feathers too. Or what? Yeah, that was Denali. She said, me and my girl Kamora have on ostrich. <laughs> Everybody else split the vote between Utica Queen and Elliot with two T's. Y'all know Utica could not go. Like, I would have been pissed if they would have voted Utica off. Utica, it ended up they voted again because it was a tie vote. And unanimously, Elliot with two T's got the boot. That's a lot of people to flip their votes from a tie. That that means four people have to flip over to you, Elliot. I, I don't know. It, it sounds a little mean, but by Elliot, girl, I wish you would have been gone for real, for real. But moving on, we get over to the workroom, the winner circle, as they like to call them, the top six are in there having a good time you know still happy they got the girls gone and they here doing the show whatever i don't know what in anyone's right mind would make them think rupaul has invited 13 girls to a season and in one episode we'll get rid of seven <laughs> like i would always in the back of my mind know it, the girls are coming back now i did think elliot was gone i would have said that wasn't fair I would have been like that. You could have gave him a chance. But here we go. Ding dong. Elliot is back. One of the girls deserves a second chance. And that's Elliot. And I think it's cute. I don't know if this has to do with COVID. And that's why they're splitting the premieres up in so many parts with fewer girls. Or if Rue really wants to give the girls an opportunity. Because it is kind of like, oh, you spent all this money. You come out. Ooh, they out. I'm sorry. <laughs> or it is, you know, all oh, y'all spent all this money to come here and showcase your talent. And in one episode, somebody has to go. So is Rue trying to just give somebody, because somebody has to be the first Shantae sachet away. You know, somebody got to go first. So I think if Rue is either, it's the COVID thing or Rue is giving the ladies many opportunities to showcase their talent before you have to be the first one to get the chop whatever um so this is group one's turn the mini challenge i'm so happy i hope this is a season-long thing because i love when rupaul does a mini challenge and a main challenge i don't like when it's the whole episode of a main challenge and a whole episode of working up to it in the workroom so we get a mini challenge it's a fashion show you know i love the fashions I have my trusty iPhone. I'm going to try to hold up the fashions. Y'all watched. So y'all already know. Your girl, I ain't, I ain't Rob, it ain't Rob has a podcast over here. I ain't got it where I can click it up on the screen. But I'm going to show you what I got. We're going to talk about the fashions. It's a daytime and a nighttime look. So let's hit it. Up first, my girl, I like Gottmik. I do. I love her makeup. So Gottmik was up first. Y'all see Gottman had on the rainbow dress with the... I like the whole concept of this, of it being a nice sunny day 
the sunshine is her purse. She has the garden on her feet, a rainbow around her waist, the hair and the makeup. Gamek, no one can touch her when it comes to the makeup. And I'm telling you, probably the best thing I love about Drag Race is looking at all the different makeups. I tried a little experiment. I saw, I'm going off subject. Nikki Tutorials said how she highlights this inner corner up to the brow with just a splash of color. So I kind of did that with a faint, a very light neon green. I think that's cute. See, that's what I watch it for. I get pointers, I get tips, and I experiment. But Gottmik gets a yes ma'am for that latex sunny day rainbow dress. I love it. <sighs> up next, you already know, Candy Muse. Candy Muse. The Marie Antoinette, she's in charge of the girls uh, back in the 1800s. No, ma'am. That is not a daytime look. Now, this, yes, this is extremely sexy. I'm showing all the breasts in the world. But it's a jumpsuit. This, no, ma'am. Who goes out in the daytime with that wig? It, it was just a no, ma'am, Candy Hughes. And I feel like it's red, the theme of the season. I've never seen so many red outfits in my life. Up next, I just I took this picture of her on the spin. <laughs> it's it's a cute, a cute um picnic dress. I think the hunter green and the burnt orange of it makes it look fall, which kind of turns it into a nighttime look for me, just the color. But I love the dress. La La Re, I love saying that La La Re. I'm be I hope you don't get voted off early, girl. I love that name. La La Ree did um, stumble on her dress. But like she said, I ain't fall. She kept them heels a clicking and a clacking. You just get a ma'am for this, La La Ree. It wasn't my favorite. The braids, I love black roots with the blonde, long blonde braids. I love that. So you just get a ma'am. Up next is, I think my, my favorite is going to be Olivia Lux. Um, it's the sunglasses for me. The ponytail and the sunglasses for me. Um, let's go over to another picture. See, this this one is more beautiful to me. That little side look. I like Olivia Lux. I love the color. I, I'm not a fan of this dress with the feathers. Like, I like a good shift dress. But I wasn't a fan of the golden, yellow, purple feathers. But from the neck up, that makeup, that ponytail, and the sunglasses, I love it. And her little tiny purse. Is that going to be a thing? Because I heard them little tiny purses cost about $10,000 for that little tiny purse. I don't know. That could be the budget for anyone. I don't know. But everything about Olivia Lux lives up to her name. Like, I feel like she's very Lux. I like her. That was a yes, ma'am. Um, this is an awful picture of Simone. I just liked it because it showcased everything about what she was doing, like the cape, the skirt, like it all, it was in motion. That's why I captured that picture. I love the colors. This is an outfit where two could go. I would have loved this pantsuit without the cape and without the skirt, definitely without the cape. I feel like the cape was a touch too much. I wasn't a fan of the real high hair. I know it was a throwback to the nineties when she say salt and pepper or something. I just didn't like it. Um, but this is still, this is still a yes ma'am. Simone looked good. <sighs> Tina Burner. Tina Burner and her tutu red burner dress and hair. I don't like it. It's a no man for me. It looks very expensive and very well put together. But I'm over the red. I had already seen Candy in her red. I'm over the red. I really don't wear red in the daytime like I, got, I know i got a little splash of red polka dots but i really don't wear red in the daytime it looks kind of harsh for a daytime look it looks like a night at the opera to me so that's a no ma'am tina you got a no ma'am <sighs> and here go elliot with two t's and her red looking like she going to the opera in paris i don't like it it's a no ma'am for me it's cute it ain't nothing wrong with it but when i think of daytime I'm not putting on a full gown with a fur and a beret in the middle of the day. When I think of daytime, I'm thinking of going to the beach, a brunch out with my girls, a little tea time, you know, in the park. I, 
you could even put on a power suit for work. This reads nighttime to me. When I see red, I think night. But so you get a no man too. This ain't Joey J. Elliot with two T's. Let's move over to the night. This is one of my favorite looks because this is definitely a throwback to Miss Little Kim. And she splashed it with Elvira. I love the black. I love the black pasty. The hair and the makeup, yes. Giving, it's giving. Um, the accessories is very sexy. Gottmik is going to be, she going to be one. She going to be one. She going to be a problem for you ladies to get out. Um, up next, Candy look a hot ass mess in this devil latex suit. That doesn't read nighttime to me. It reads Halloween. It, it, this was not a costume contest, Candy. This was a fashion show with a theme. And, and you went to, like they say, you went over to Party City. You went over to Party City to get you a Marie Antoinette hooker outfit. And now you got on the devil. And then you had a hole in the back. You was missing the tail or whatever was supposed to go in the back. And they called you out on it. The makeup look a mess. Mm -mm. I ain't like it. You get a no ma'am candy. It's a no ma'am. La la ree. Now this is what the titties are out for. <laughs> this was my favorite. Definitely giving me pepper from salt and pepper. Um, I don't like the fire red hair. I think maybe a nice auburn look would have been a nice hair color with that. But... She said, you looking for a lady of the night. Let me give it to you. All of this and all of that. Titties and ass. Book of heels. Yes. La La Ree. That was my favorite nighttime look. I, I love. I just love it. It's, it you follow the theme. Yes, ma'am. You follow the theme. Who's next? <sighs> my girl. This ain't Simone. Um, Olivia Lux. Olivia Lux is going to be a problem. Just like Got Mick. Um, I love that chocolate brown hair on you, girl. I, I like the auburn, too, but this chocolate brown is cute. That dress was everything. Olivia can just dress. Olivia has style. And it's not necessarily in trend, but I love everything about Olivia's look. Um... That's a dress I would put on if I had somewhere to go. I don't think I have anywhere <laughs> that fancy to go right now, but I would definitely that would definitely be in my closet. Up next is Simone. I was not a fan of this look. I'm sure it's very high fashion and very expensive. What I love the most about Simone's look were the braids with the little balls on the end. That hair is everything. And so the hair alone gives her a yes, ma'am. Oh. I love it. Um, moving on. Um, somebody forgot to tell Tina Burner that Denali already did the helicopter ponytail. We've seen that before. This outfit is nothing special. Um, Tina, you got to step it up. You got to step it up. Um, you should already know if you've been trying to get on Drag Race for seven seasons, that means you're a fan of the show you watch. You cannot have a th color theme of the season. We don't want to see... It was cute, episode one. I don't want to see the New York Fire Department color scheme of every in every challenge. They already told you on Twitter that you look like you are a sponsor from Ronald McDonald. <laughs> <laughs> that had me crack it up. But let's move on. I just don't like this. Um, Utica. No, this ain't Utica. Well, see, this is why I don't even know this child's name. Elliot with two T's. I don't like it. it. It's probably very expensive. The judges loved it. I don't like that splash of red, neon red hair. It, it just looks, it makes the whole outfit all out of place. Moving on. Let's get back into the outfit. That was the fashion. I gave my yes ma'ams and my no ma'ams. So now they're back in the workroom. I don't know if they're taking their makeup off, but at some point... The highlight of the conversation for me is, you know, they talking about, you know, we the top girls, everybody here want to lip sync, except for, oh, you, Elliot. 
I might have a conversation out of order, but the main thing that I want to talk about is Elliot throws shade at Candy saying, well, look, you always talking about daughter this, mother that. It seemed like the people who come in the show talking about who their mother is be the first one out the door. Look at Brent, Brandy. Y'all excuse me. Y'all know I just be saying that. It be so many names coming up in my head. Look at Vangie <laughs> talking about Miss Alexis Mateo and she out first. Here come Dahlia talking about she the daughter of Aja and she was gone first. And let me tell you something real quick, Miss Candy Muse. What Elliot said, you got upset and it was shady, but it was about to be true tea. If it was not a Shantae, everybody stay episode, Candy would have hit that door. Candy would have hit that door this week and the trend would have continued. You better step that pussy up, girl, because. Mm. So they have it's a congratulations pop song challenge. You got to write a verse to RuPaul's hit song. That's not one of my favorite songs of Ru's. I actually don't even like that song. It's, it's not a very danceable song. It's kind of a medium beat. Like, congratulations. Whoa. It's, 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 um, if we're going to do pop and we're going to pop pussies and all that, give us an upbeat song. But um, whatever. That was the challenge. Let's hurry up and get through this. Elliot finally spills the tea. I know I'm going out of order, but I'm just, I took a little bit of notes of the things that I actually cared about. A lot of this episode, I didn't care about. Elliot spills the tea because they like, one, Candy is still in her feelings <laughs> about that Aja comment. And so Elliot is like, they like, we think you a spy. Like, Rue just sent you in here to spy. <sighs> so Elliot is like, look, I'm not a spy. What really happened is we had a vote. Everybody was out in the pork chop lounge. It was a tie vote at first between me and somebody else, and then it was a unanimous vote, and I was ordered out. So while you ladies in here are kicking and having a good time, you need to be making room because the other six girls are coming. Okay, everyone was, as they say, gagged. They was like, oh, I love La La Ree. I love her. I, I do like her. She was like, bitch. So you telling me in the first episode you already got eliminated by miss tina burner one time but you done got eliminated not one but three times in one episode <laughs> i'm sorry that was the funniest confessional to me i was like yes she yes she did not one not two but three times <sighs> okay so the tea is out on that so let's get to the rehearsal the rehearsal is a mess rue why don't you get these girls you know i know it's COVID, but why don't you have a little on staff choreographer who can help these girls with it because that routine was very lackluster um nobody wants to be in charge of the girls you know as funky that even would say <laughs> nobody wants to be in charge of the girls everyone is like uh Elliot, this was your moment to shine. You are this huge dancer, the next Brooklyn Heights, as you say. You should have stepped up and said, look, I'm a dancer. Let me give you all a little two-step. And you should have stepped up. And eventually you did, but you wasted so much time trying to play in the background. Anyway, and I don't know why Tina did, because Tina was on the stage with Rue when um you said you was this big time dancer and everything i don't know why tina didn't be like look elliot is a dancer elliot what you got <sighs> moving on the next part of the rehearsal that was a big deal is got mick and her lead line is i was born a girl or i used to be a girl whatever she said i don't remember the line but she i guess was listening to it in her headphones and didn't realize, oh shit, I wrote this and recorded this, but I ain't tell none of the other girls. So they gonna the first time they gonna hear this is on stage, and that's gonna be a. Uh... And she kind of got in her feelings like, I wish I would have told the girls before I would have wrote my verse. And I really expected, you know, a a bigger mirror moment of this conversation because. She had a conversation with Olivia Lux about it. It didn't seem like that was the first time she was telling Olivia Lux. And I know they talked about it again in Uncut. But I'm telling you, in Uncut, I scroll, I was scrolling through my 
my um what's it called tiktoks i wasn't interested in what they were talking about I, it probably won't be interesting until all the girls come together um or until we get some real organic drama i just was expecting people to ask more questions and i mean i'm all here for it. anybody can do drag you know we not gonna discriminate against anybody i'm all here for that it's just so different and maybe it's just different to me i would have expected a big bigger mirror moment and for at least people to ask questions and for her to share more of her story and it was kind of like a olivia thank you for sharing that with me girl hug hug womp womp like we didn't get anything out of the moment that i was expecting but moving on from that, maybe it'll come later on in the season. Maybe when she tells the other girls, you know, maybe they might ask a question or two. I don't know. But God Nick was in her feelings and she kind of lost some of her rehearsal time because she was in her head about not telling the girls that she, you know, telling the girls her true tea. Anyway, moving on from that. <sighs> When did I say? Everyone says... Okay. They're getting dressed for the performance. Everyone is telling, you know, who they... Because, you know, Candy is talking about, well, if it was me, I would have voted off the big threat. I would have probably voted off Tina or Gottmik. And everyone went around the room saying Tina or Gottmik. And when it got to Olivia... Now, Olivia is in her feelings like, these bitches don't think I'm a threat. I'm like, girl. Girl. The only three names out of you seven that came up was Tina Gottmik, and I think one person said Simone. So why are you tripping? Like, ain't nobody say La La Ree, and you heard ain't nobody say Candy. So I'm like, why are you tripping, girl? You. So Olivia was like, I'm about to show them. I'm a threat. And she showed them. She showed them. Now let's get into this challenge. Do I have a picture of the challenge? Um, Because the challenge to me, the main stage challenge, was very lackluster. I have a quick flash of all the ladies. Will it focus in their outfits? I think that's the best focus it's gonna give. Let's talk about it real quick. Um, Godman went first. I did not like her outfit. It was, it gave me Christina Aguilera for some reason. Um, it was cute, but not cute. It looked more like lingerie. Candy's definitely look like lingerie. She definitely has that Asia cotton candy colored poofy hair. I love it. I could tell Asia, your mama girl. Um, candy just looked like she had on lingerie. Um, she messed up her choreography. When she was lip singing, it looked like she didn't know her own words. Candy, you was definitely going to be in that bottom too, girl. Um... Tina Burner looked a hot ass mess in his red and yellow jumpsuit. Um, Lala Ree was cute. I like the puffy sleeves and the sequence bodysuit. Lala Ree did really good. Like Lala Ree is a performer. She's a performer. She did really good. Simone came out and did that attitude thing. Simone does something with her face. Like when she lip syncs, it is so cute. But I'm like, is this what you're gonna do every time, girl? You did it in the challenge. You did it week one, and you did it this episode, week two oh that reminds me a little off subject i was watching somebody's review and i knew week one when i was reviewing candy i was like candy reminds me of somebody i just can't put my finger on it in the back of my mind i was like well is it jason lee but i'm like no somebody said it josh martinez from big brother and the challenge i can't unsee it and that is 100% true. She definitely gives me, that's my cousin. <laughs> our mamas, our sisters, you know, definitely gives me Josh Martinez. But moving on, who came up next? La, not Lala Ree, but um, because it wasn't nothing too special about Simone's outfit. The best outfit goes to Olivia Lux. That royal blue with gold fringe was everything. She had the hair. Olivia was there to perform. She killed it. She did the best in the main challenge. For me, up next, who did the best was Elliot. Performance-wise, I really wasn't paying attention to what nobody was saying. Because nobody really said something like, ooh. Like, it was all, I'm here to win season 13. Everybody, like, 
that was everybody um moving on so that was the main challenge we get to the stage you know rue rue looked good this week that shimmery silver dress was everything i love what michelle is doing to her hair i did not remember the name of the guest judge but i like the whole panel look good this week um la may you stay runway whatever rue called it let's get into these la may looks um i'm gonna go through it real quick for the most part everyone got a yes ma'am only one person got a no ma'am um got makeup up first i can't really describe what this is but i love it <laughs> i i love it got mick i'm so happy i'm so happy you aren't a one trick pony where you know every season it's a queen that paints their face with some signature thing and they just like this is my signature look and this is how i do it because i wasn't a fan i'm not a fan of the white clown face i don't care how good you beat it i'm not a fan of that but gomic has showed us different looks every time she hit this runway and this makeup from the runway, the LeMay challenge, oh my God, that is just gorgeous. I love the jumpsuit. I love all the pleatings. It looks expensive and it looks just well put together. Gottmik gets a yes, ma'am. I'm surprised Gottmik wasn't up for the, what is it called? Lip sync for your five thousand dollars i forgot what it's called when you um nobody's going home <clears throat> but because to me gottman did really good she didn't mess up that bad in the um main challenge and she definitely to me won the fashion show up next is candy muse she just has on a cute little lingerie what they call it austin powers this is something i would definitely wear in my bedroom matter of fact candy tell me where you got it from girl because that's cute i like that color purple that's cute um, up next, La La Re looks gorgeous. I didn't get the whole outfit, but it's a, it's all just a flowy gold lame dream. I love that color hair. As you can, I wanted to up close of her makeup because like, your interest that first that first impression, girl. I didn't think you could beat your face, but this is just gorgeous. Like La La Re kicked it. She killed it. She did really good. <sighs> Oh, I just want to show you the picture. And I took that picture, the up close. I'm going to show the full link because I love everything about this look. I love the accessories, the hair, the makeup. It's just the perfect, like, me, me. I'm more of a matchy-matchy with my makeup, and I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be. Like, you see how I got on all these different polka dots, and I had to have on a yellow earring, a green eyeshadow. I'm very matchy matchy, but like she has on a like with this mint green outfit, I probably would have had on mint green everything. But like, oh, the way she just pulled those coral bronze copper tones in the eyes, the red lip. I'm in love with Olivia Lux. I am in love with her. This is the whole outfit. Like this is a dress I would definitely wear. Like to a, um one of my mom's zeta functions or something i would definitely wear that oh i love it i love it she gets a yes ma'am of the night for me um simone came out what i love the most are these french braids that come all the way down to the knees um i'm telling my stylist i want some of those because i usually get my french braids right here to the breast i'm gonna be like go ahead and bring them french braids down to my knees i'm gonna try that out it's a boxing outfit okay i ain't never even know the name of the fabric in the first place but she get a ma'am for that i mean it's cute i ain't no fan of this 10 man look with um what's her name tina burner it's cute it looked like jan's that child name is not jan what is her name i'm gonna i'm gonna remember the girl name next week but the girl in the group with jan it looked like the same outfit she had on week one, but in silver instead of pink. So, and it's pants instead of panties. I don't like it. 
this ain't the gray face challenge. I don't like it. No, man. And last and definitely the least is Ellie with two T's. This is the ugliest outfit of the night. And that's why I didn't even care to get a, a better picture. So let's move on. So everybody get to stay. I was so ready for Rue to bring Candy's ass up here and say, come up here and lip sync for your life, girl. Because you did a mess all, all challenge all week. Who do you think, who would your bottom twos be if it was a lip sync for your life? I definitely would have put Candy down there. And I probably would have put Tina Burner down there. Because her looks were atrocious all day. I ain't like, I didn't like any of Tina Burner's looks today. Yeah, so it would have been Candy and Tina. And I feel like Tina would have sent Candy on out the door and then Candy would have had to eat her words with Elliot with two T's. But anyway, they lip singing for a $5,000 tip. It's Olivia Lux as it should be. And Simone, who I feel like got Nick, could have beat out Simone. But my name ain't Rue. My name is not RuPaul. So I ain't a judge. I don't get no say. That lip sync um, to that, what's her name? I'm going to mess her name up, but it's Break My Heart. I like that song because I do, 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 do. I love, I, oh, I love it. What I think about this lip sync, a lot of people on Twitter was like, Olivia should have won. It was definitely a, if this would have been a lip sync for your life, Ashante, you both stay. Like, I wouldn't have sent neither one of them home for that lip sync. They both lip sync it, sank it down. Like I said, Simone gave me the energy of the song. It wasn't, Olivia's lip syncs always have, she is one with the music. She lip syncs down. Her mouth and the words are always in sync. She emotes the energy. But this one was too comedic. Like, I'm falling and I'm looking. It was like, you ain't got to act out every word of the song. It was too much. You should, she was, they both danced. Maybe if Olivia had one of them little slitter skirts where she could have had on a little bodysuit, maybe she could have danced a little bit more. But I don't know. It, it was two great lip syncs. I liked Simone's little, ki you know, kitschy looks. Like, mm, mm. she does a lot of this head, neck roll, and eye. Like, Simone was giving. And then she was taking them gloves off. And then she threw that jacket. And I was like, yes. Simone was giving. Simone, to me, I would have gave her the $5,000 tip to Olivia. You did too much. Olivia, I hope this is both ladies. Both ladies, I would like to see variety. Like, Simone, you can't be sassy and shaking the neck in every lip sync. Like, every song ain't a neck shake song. And Olivia, you don't have to act out each word <laughs> of the song. Like, sometimes you can just give me I'm falling without having to actually fall. You know? <laughs> so, <sighs> It was a good episode. I ain't gonna complain. Like, I, I already told you all, I'm sorry. I didn't watch Untucked, so I don't have anything to review on Untucked. Just because I was listening to it, but nothing caught my attention. And I was just scrolling through TikTok. I can't wait next week. I mean, next week, I feel like we're gonna have to go through the whole thing again. We're gonna have to see these next six ladies do their fashion shows, lip sync, today RuPaul song. Shantae, everybody gonna stay again. And and then by episode four, Rue, if everybody ain't coming together, I'm gonna be over it. Like, I'm, I wanna see everybody get together, talk shit, compete. I wanna see somebody go home. Somebody gotta go. That's the whole point of competition shows. <sighs> I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Anyway, comment, let me know what you all think about the episode. I will be back next week for RuPaul's Drag Race Episode 3. I can't wait to see the next six ladies. I'm hoping to see more fashion. I can't wait to see what Utica comes up with. Denali, like this set of six. Utica, Denali, Kimora. I can't wait to see what Kimora pulls out her bag. Tamisha, 
I done forgot everybody else. The Chicken Feather Girl, Joey J. I can't remember the Jans girl's name, but I'm going to have it down. I'm going to write it down next week, and I'm going to... I have to stop. I have to work on <laughs> memorizing. But uh, I forgot her name already. There go Luke and Angelo. He want to come be on camera real quick. Come on, Luke. He just jumped up here. Say goodbye to everybody. So we'll see you next week. Bye.